Hey guys, how are y'all doing? If you're like me right now, you're on Cloud9. You are doing absolutely amazing because, oh my gosh, all the zombie storyline information that we got dumped on today has been absolutely so just deep depth and storyline and just digging through it. It's been absolutely amazing. While rereading all this information, I can't even count how many times now that I have done it. There's been one map and the information we learned about that one map that has been the most interesting to me. And I want to share that with you guys. And it's about the one map that probably most people hate. It's about five. Now, before we learned all this information, when you thought of five, the most common thing was like, it doesn't fit in anywhere. It has a little bit of ties to Ascension, but not really anything that truly is throwing it into the storyline. But, oh my goodness, you can trace so many maps going into this map now is absolutely crazy so we're gonna start back at the very beginning now as i go through this information i'm gonna be having quotes and excerpts on the screen from the Canorium timeline page itself i encourage you to go look at it yourself you know there's a lot of information and you can just get lost in this thing for hours so i'll have a link down below if you want to go look at it for yourself but okay let's dive right into this so the five story begins with the Ultimus group, or AKA the original four from Black Ops 1 Universe. They go to Shinonuma and the Rising Sun facility, and they have to go there for Richtofen's diary, which he left there. And this diary has this information to where he's going to try to defeat Samantha with it. They collect the diary, and then they go back to Doris. Well, while they're in Doris, they're trying to go back to the moon directly to go straight to confront Samantha. But as they're trying to teleport, the teleport, it breaks, it goes wrong, and they get sent elsewhere, aka Kino. But as they're getting sent to Kino der Toten, Richtofen drops the diary and it's still left in Doris. Now, while the Ultimus group is teleporting through space and time, Group 935 in regular time is completely disbanded. It doesn't exist anymore. So all the research stations are completely abandoned. Once these research stations have been abandoned, we have the United States and the Soviet Union, and both of them are going through these research stations. They're collecting resources, sharing them amongst each other. And one of the things that the Soviet Union specifically find is Richtofen's diary. Now, another thing that both of these countries were doing is, once Group 935 disbanded, they were getting the scientists from Group 935 and was getting them to work for each one of their sides, United States and Soviet Union, respectively. Now, the actual individuals that they get for each side is where this storyline kind of breaks apart for a little bit. So, we're going we're gonna to focus on the Soviet Union side first, and then we'll come back and we'll play it into the United States side. So the Soviet Union, they hire a man called Harvey Yena, which if you don't know the name, he is supposedly responsible for helping create the scavenger, which you can find on Call of the Dead. Now, Harvey is in charge of the Ascension Group, and then working for the Ascension Group, we have Gersh and Yuri Zavoisky, who begin working there. Now, Gersh and Yuri specifically are working on one project together, and it's called Project Mercury, or they're working on creating the Gersh device. Now, one day, I don't know why, it doesn't really explain, but Yuri begins noticing children toys around the facility to where they're working and the Ascension group is located. Eventually, Yuri actually ends up reading Richtofen's diary that he dropped back in Doris. Because if you remember, the Soviet Union was the one that actually recovered the diary and then this went with the Ascension group. Now, he keeps reading the diary, reading the diary, and eventually he begins hearing Samantha's voice. And he continues to keep reading, and Samantha's voice becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And eventually, Samantha basically has control and can basically make Yuri do anything that she wants him to do. Now, also by this point in time, Yuri actually got removed from the Gersh device project. However, that's actually what Samantha was interested in. So, Samantha is sitting here nagging at Yuri to get him to go back and continue to work on the Gersh device. And that's what he eventually does. He gets the device to a mediocre or fully functional, it's not quite sure, but the Gersh device is working to a degree. What he does then is he tricks Gersh into actually activating the device and creating the rift portal to which you can teleport through space, time, and travel. Does this, Gersh and Samantha are grabbed and ripped into this portal and sent out where throughout space and time. 
However, Yuri himself is also pulled into this portal, and he's sent somewhere that we might be a little bit familiar with. Now we're going to jump back a little bit to where the Soviet Union and the U.S. were basically picking and choosing information and scientists from the disbanded Group 935. Now, the basement level of the Map 5, this is basically where the scientists were. They were performing their research here, they continued evaluating results, trying, experimenting, getting new weapons and whatnot. The fields of study that we specifically know they were working on were the ones that are going to follow. They continued their experimentation on the undead. They built their own prototype teleporting system, and they were continuing to perfect it. They were trying to construct their own version of the Wonderwaf DG that Richtofen himself made back on the Reese. And then they were also trying to make their own version of the Winter's Howl. Now, to my knowledge, the Pentagon didn't have any problems at all with controlling all their experiments and their tests. They didn't have any worries about any zombies escaping, an outbreak, nothing at all of that concern until the Cosmodrone slash Ascension events happened with Samantha, Gersh, and Yuri. Once they activated that Gersh device and they all got pulled into it, the zombie outbreak actually went over to the Pentagon itself. Now, it actually happened at the Pentagon because of Samantha. When they all got pulled into the Gersh device, basically, Samantha trapped Gersh inside of the Cosmodrone itself in his ethereal form, but Samantha also sent Yuri to the Pentagon to terrorize and to try and stop anyone from surviving the Pentagon. Now, if you know the map 5 at all, there's this one enemy boss that we've known of for years, but we never knew exactly who he was. There's always been these theories, you know, but no one exactly knew until now. Yuri Zavoisky is indeed the Pentagon thief, and I remember reading this for the first time, and my reaction, I was just like, oh my gosh. Seven years of this map being out, and we finally figure out who this Pentagon thief actually is, and it just blew my mind entirely. But we're not done there yet, because there is still more to discuss about the Five storyline. So the four main characters are JFK, McNamara, Fidel Castro, and Nixon. Obviously, they're all important characters of U.S. history back during the 50s and 60s. Well, they're just trying to survive the zombie horde and whatnot. They were here just discussing plans after the whole Cuban Missile Crisis, and then that's when the outbreak happened, and they're just here trying to survive and whatnot. Well, the zombie horde is going to keep attacking everyone at the Pentagon until the Ultimus group actually can free Gersh from the Cosmodrone slash Ascension, or they complete the Ascension Easter Egg. As soon as they do that, the zombie horde stops attacking the Pentagon, and all four of the main characters actually survive the encounter. Now, you're thinking here, oh, they survived the zombie outbreak, they went on just to live the rest of their lives, blah blah blah, right? Eh, wrong. If you remember, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 2 introduced this idea of the multiverse to where if something happens, it can affect multiple dimensions in different ways and cause different outcomes. And 5 is just as much as a victim of that as any of the other maps. Now, we don't know exactly which event caused 5 specifically to have a fracture in its storyline and to alter its outcome, but we do know that it happens. If I had to guess about what event specifically caused 5 to change, it would probably be when Primus Richtofen goes back and stops Ultimus Richtofen on the giant from awakening the Ultimus forms of Nikolai, Takio, and Dempsey. Because think of it like this. If the Ultimus group and the Ultimus Richtofen are never able to recover Richtofen's diary, that entire chain of events is already going to be permanently altered because that was what majorly affected the Ascension group and the zombie outbreak that happened at the Cosmodrone itself. The other possible event that could have caused 5 to change is Garod Krovi. On the Cronorian page itself, it's laid out to where you follow the timelines and they go in order, right? Well, wherever it discusses about the fractures in time and how it's affecting things, we have Garod Krovi, and then it talks about, directly after that, Shangri-La and how it was affected. And then following that, we learn about how the Pentagon 
changed and was different. This is Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara. I am transmitting on a secure channel in the most dire of circumstances. The Pentagon is under attack from an unknown enemy. As of this moment, I am safely ensconced inside a janitor's closet. Unfortunately, I fear the president and the VIPs may not have found similar safe haven. <laughs> From what I have observed, our attackers may be blighted by some kind of sickness. Either that or they're just dirty hippies under the influence of hallucinogenic substances. I can only hope that this message will bring rescue. Until then, please pray for me. So that recording was actually a radio that was in Revelations. It's McNamara talking about how he's locked himself in a closet and he believes that Nixon, Castro, and Kennedy are all dead and eventually he is going to die himself, which he does. That exact same event is how it is written in the Canorium page following the Garad Krovi fracture. So in the entire multiverse, we have two known endings for five. We have it to where Kennedy, Nixon, McNamara, and Castro all live, but then we also have a universe to where they all die. And it all depends on the temporal rifts that happen. But that is the entirety of the five storyline. We now know how it connects into the storyline overall, how the other maps play a factor into it. We now know who the Pentagon thief is, which is probably the biggest piece of information we could have learned about five directly. And we just, we know why there's the five radio and revelations and it's just five isn't one of the keystone maps, but it does have a pivotal part in the storyline. And I know I was excited to read all this information and that's why I was very, very happy to put a video together about five because I enjoyed it and I really do love learning about all this. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed learning a little bit about five. Maybe you want to go play it now. If you have Black Ops 1, go enjoy it a little bit because it's not an often played map. So maybe this will bring a little bit of life back to it. But I hope you guys have a great day. If you like the video, drop a like. Make sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.